Hey there, I am back with another deck review and today we're going to be getting a little bit of a preview of the upcoming Tournament of the Mythic Kingdoms deck from BoardGaming.com. BoardGaming.com is the creation of brothers Jim and John Whitworth, uh, and they combined in putting together this deck their love of both board games but also classic fantasy, which for me is something I absolutely love. When I say classic fantasy, uh, think like the orcs and dwarves and elves that you might find in like a Tolkien novel or something like that. Uh, that's really kind of classic fantasy that combines with board gaming to put together this really beautiful deck. Now they work with artist Greg Swearingen, very talented artist, uh, and you'll see a lot of his work through this completely hand-drawn deck. Uh, but going to get right into it and give you guys a chance to look at the cards. Now, if you like what you see here, absolutely go check out the Kickstarter campaign. I'm a backer in it. Uh, definitely worth checking out. It's already fully funded and has hit several stretch goals. So there's a lot of really exciting things that are in store for this deck. But there's still a couple of weeks to go before it, fun, uh, before it finishes. So you still have time to go jump in if you are interested. Uh, but let's take a look at the cards themselves. Now, there's two different decks, and I'm really just going to look at the decks, not the tuck cases, because the tuck cases that came with the prototype, just not quite ready for uh, ready for prime time. There are much nicer tuck cases that are planned for the campaign. I'll put a picture up here so you can see what's upcoming in the really beautiful tuck cases. Uh, but we're going to be looking at the cards themselves, and that's really the most exciting part of any deck. Uh, it comes in two different versions. You have the purple and the green. This is the magic and the uh, nature deck. So two different versions of the deck. Uh, but we're gonna start out by looking through the magic version of the deck, and then we'll come back and look at some of the differences with the nature deck. So let's get into it. All right, starting with the back design of the cards, and here it is. A uh, really beautifully drawn, combines lots of elements of that classic fantasy with board games throughout. Uh, right in the center, you'll see the first nod to board games. Uh, this is sort of a spinner that you might see like on the game of life or something like that. Uh, so you've got that classic spinner in the center forming that main element. Uh, and then surrounding it is sort of this mural of different fantasy creatures. Uh, most prominently, you have the dragon with its body wrapped all the way around the edges of the deck. And he's squaring off with an orc uh, who's just ready to go to battle this massive orc in the center. Uh, really beautifully drawn. Love the kind of menacing look on his face as they get ready to square off. Uh, and then as you look all the way around, you'll see lots of little details that just pop out the more you look at this, which is something I really like. Uh, you have the leaping stag right there, a pack of wolves who's kind of fallen on the body of the, uh, the tail of that dragon over there. Uh, I've got a fairy up here uh, holding a die in her hands, another nod to board gaming, just beautifully drawn and against that kind of dark purple backdrop uh, for the magic deck. Finishes out in a medium kind of parchment colored border, kind of giving that tan aged look to it around. Really nicely done. If there's one knock, I wish it had been a two-way back design, but as one-way back designs go, I think it's really well done, really beautifully illustrated. And honestly, despite the fact that it's so strongly one way, uh, still definitely one that to me, I don't find terribly distracting if I, uh, you know, if I have some of the cards in different directions, just because there's so much detail going on through here. Uh, but it is a one-way back design, so if that's something that bothers you, uh, you know, that's the one detract detractor I can say from the back design. Still, really beautifully illustrated. I like it quite a bit. But let's flip the deck over and get into the cards themselves. Now, really interesting concept that's worked through on these. Uh, the deck is meant to kind of imagine four different classic fantasy races. Uh, you have the hearts represented by the elves, uh, the... Uh, clubs for the orcs, the diamonds for the dwarves, and the spades for the undead. And it's meant to imagine a world where each of these, each card represents some of the characters in battle. Uh, the number cards represent the soldiers, the, uh, the classic uh, court cards represent the royalty, and the aces represent the four champions of the four different races. And so the backstory of this entire deck uh, is kind of a fantasy world where rather than going into battle with, you know, with classic swords and, you know, meeting on a battlefield, they would meet in these games uh, using these decks. And so that's the backstory of the deck. And you'll see what I mean by the characters as we go throughout. 
Now, I did say that the uh, that the number cards all represent the different soldiers of the different races. So starting with the hearts, we're gonna be looking at the elvish race. And there's the first of our elves over there in that green heart in the center. And you can see the winged helmet of the elf forming a really beautiful silhouette on that forest green heart. And then the classic uh, red pip and index in the corner with that same pip design and then a custom font on the index. And as you go through the numbers, you've got a custom layout of the pips, but increasing number of soldiers as you go through the number cards. Very nicely done. Uh, jumping over to the clubs, now we're gonna look at the orcs. And so you've got the menacing orc on the blue pip uh, with his tusks kind of flaring up there on either side and forming that classic club shape. And then the black pip and index in the corner. And that goes through the uh, orcs. And then as we go to the diamonds, now we're gonna go to the dwarves. And so you've got the kind of grimacing dwarf there in the center uh, with his rounded helmet and kind of on these uh, orangish color uh, diamond pips. Uh, so there are your dwarves. And then last but not least are the undead, of course, represented by the skull. And so there are the purple uh, pips of the undead. Uh, so those are the soldiers, kind of, uh, you know, I will call them, uh, you know, kind of repetitious soldiers. So just sort of the legions uh, that go to battle with each one of the different uh, races. But the real highlight in this in any deck is gonna be in the court card. So now we go to the royalty of each one and each one of these kind of gets a much, uh, much higher end treatment of the artwork on these. And you really get to see uh, Greg Swearing and the illustrator's art come to life on these. So here are the royalty of the Elvish kingdom. Uh, and you'll see the three different characters. You've got the banner down the center of these two-way court cards, giving the name of each one. So you've got Eagle Eye Jack, as, uh, Jack, the Queen of Hearts is of course the Queen of Hearts, and King Adieu represented over here. Uh, you can see the beautiful kind of pencil drawing style in all three of these. Uh, beautifully done against that green backdrop with the leaves in the background. Uh, and the really nice shading and artwork that goes into these, really beautifully done. Now, one of the other cool things that you may not notice right off the bat is that each one of these has a tie-in to the classic bicycle deck of cards. I'll get a chance to show you what I mean. Uh, so the, here, we'll start with the Jack of Hearts. And I'm not gonna go to every single detail. I'll leave some of that for you to discover as we go through, but I'll go through it on the hearts. Uh, so on the Jack of Hearts, uh, typically the Jack is holding a feather in his hands. And so of course, represented here, you have the Jack of Hearts on this one, holding the, uh, the arrow with of course a feather fletching at the top. Very cool, fun little touch. Uh, the Queen of Hearts in the classic deck is holding a flower in her hands. And so of course here, our Queen of Hearts is holding a card with a flower on it. So again, a kind of nod to the classic Queen of Hearts. And then the King of Hearts is of course known as the suicidal king in the deck because he looks like he's got that sword running through his head uh, because he's kind of got it behind his head. And of course, King Adieu here also in classic fashion has the sword raised up to his head in that suicidal king pose. So very cool blend of original and expressive artwork, but then at the same time combined with details that really give a nod and pay homage to the classic deck of cards. Uh, so there's the hearts. Uh, having gone through that though, then we get to the ace, which is the champion of the elvish race, and it is the white heart, that majestic stag. He's got the collar with the heart on it uh, and the massive antlers that kind of form a loose heart shape at the top. Really beautifully illustrated. This one is actually probably my favorite card in the whole deck. I love the look of those uh, antlers, that symmetrical look to them. Uh, so there's the champion of the elvish race. Uh, going to the clubs now, uh, now we're turning back to the orcs, if you'll remember. Uh, so now the blue backgrounds, and again, really beautifully drawn. I love the facial expressions on these. This sort of menacing, angry, mischievous kind of mixture. So you've got Mad Jack, uh, biting on an ace of hearts there in his mouth uh, on one of them. On the jack, the queen of clubs is the queen of fate. I uh, really like on this one the uh, the d20 die that's over here uh, off to the side. And then 
The king of clubs is the monarch, very large and menacing with a skull that looks puny in his hands over there and the large club hefted over his shoulder. Really cool look to the clean of club, uh, king of clubs on that one. And then the champion of the orcs is the outrider. A massive orc with his pack of wolves that he travels with. Love that look and the three wolves kind of give you again that loose shape of the club. Uh, now turning to the diamonds, we go to the dwarves. Uh, and again, you see the fun facial expressions that go into all of these. And again, you'll see little nods. If you hold these side by side with one of the classic cards, you'll see all kinds of little details, whether it be the weapons or the things that are in everybody's hands. Uh, you'll get a little bit of a look of a classic bicycle deck of cards, but mixed in with what is truly original artwork. So the Jack of Diamonds, you have Laughing Jack with the giant uh, pole axe over there over his shoulder. Uh, the, the Queen of Diamonds is the Diamond Queen. She's holding a little die in her hands which has a little tiny flower on it. And the King of Diamonds is the Axe King. Uh, looking off to the side, he's got a little Ace of Diamonds reveal and the uh, Axe on his back. So really cool. Love that Laughing Jack. That's another really fun card. Uh, the Champion of the Dwarves is the Gem Golem. Uh, gem Golem, uh, kind of a representation of Earth mountains and gems at the same time and so really fitting to kind of go with dwarves who are really classically de depicted in mountains and maybe mining for gems themselves so there's the gem golem as the champion of the diamond suit and last but not least are the spades representing the race of the undead because you got the one-eyed jack over here he's got a domino in his hands the one-eyed jack the uh knight queen with the hourglass and the Shadow King. Uh, this is one, you know, when you think in classic terms, the queen is one of the most subtle and beautiful representations or kind of nods back to the original uh, bicycle queen of spades. And you'll see right there in the hourglass is a little bit of a flower that's kind of formed at the top. And again, that's represented with the flower that the classic queen of spades holds in her hand. Uh, so another cool little nod in that one. Uh, so there are the three uh, royalty of the spades or the undead. And last but not least is the giant undead dragon who makes his way as the champion of the undead. You can see him there kind of perching on a pedestal, really just beautifully majestic looking. And of course his wings kind of form that spade shape on the final and power ace of the deck with boardgaming.com written at the bottom. Really beautiful, majestic look to that. Ace of Spades, really fantastic card there. Uh, so that is the deck. Uh, now the Nature deck, very much the same with the uh, with the with most of the deck. Not too many differences, uh, but you do get a green color, and I like this one a lot. Uh, I like both colors, honestly. I think they're both really, really well done. Love the contrast. You can really see all those details pop out very nicely on both versions of the deck. But you do get the Nature version of the deck. Uh, now the final deck is going to come with different jokers, some extra gaff cards, including a double backer. So there's more cards that are planned for the final deck if you get them. Uh, I'm not going to go into handling too much other than to say the final decks will be printed by USPCC, who I have every expectation they're going to handle outstanding, you know, as all USPCC decks do. Uh, so I don't have any concerns on that front. Obviously, these are not going to handle the same as those because the prototypes aren't printed by them. Uh, but what about the uses of the deck? Well, the deck, as you might expect from the makers of BoardGaming.com, was really first and foremost, above everything else, designed to be a deck for gameplay. They really intended you to bring these decks out, use the characters on there to kind of bring new life to classic games. Even games as simple as war can be reimagined as the factions battling against each other. In fact, they believe so much in it being about board games uh, or about gameplay that they actually have invented their own game. It's called the Mythic Challenge game. Uh, if you go check out their Kickstarter, you can find out the rules of the game and find out how the characters within this really kind of play in to make the game even more interesting. So definitely recommend checking that out if you're curious. You know, even if you don't end up back in the campaign, maybe you'll learn a new card game that'll be interesting for you to kind of play with some people. Uh, I played it myself. I think it's a fun little game. Very cool game. My family enjoyed it as well. So uh, I'd go check that one out if I were you, even if you don't want to back the deck itself. Uh, but for me, 
It was an easy deck to back. Definitely recommend checking it out yourself uh, if you like what you see here. So that's it. That is the look at the tournament of the Mythic Kingdoms deck. Thanks to BoardGaming.com for sending me these prototypes to take a look at. Hope you guys enjoyed this look at this one. Uh, and make sure you subscribe for more deck reviews and unboxings. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next one.